Welcome to Kids Cove News. We are so excited to see you this morning. It's Promotion Sunday, and you all are looking so great in your Western gear. That's right. We are so excited to be in our new classes this morning with our new teachers and new friends. It's going to be a great day. If you haven't already, make sure you get your Kids Cove bandana. And Giddy Up Gill is with us in large group this morning, too. It's a great day in Kids Golf and on iCampus Kids today. We will worship and Kids Worship Arts are kicking off soon on September 11th. Boys and girls, have your parents sign, sign you up online and join us on Sunday evenings at 5 30. And Awana is kicking off soon on September 14th too. Join us on Wednesday nights at 6.30 for scripture memory, games, large group time, and so much more. And we can't leave without wishing our friends happy birthday this week. Joshua's birthday is August the 16th. And Liam's birthday is the 18th. And Lana's birthday is August 21st. Happy birthday, friends. That's, That's a wrap, wrap for Kids Code News. News. See, See you, you next week. week. Hi Campus Kids, it's Yancey, and I'm ready to praise God with you. I want every breath that I take, every beat of my heart, all to be for the glory of God. Let's sing this song, Heartbeat, for you. Let's make it be our prayer today. Come on, clap those hands. Hey. Let's sing this to God together. I'm running deep the day. I'm leaving for the glory of your name, oh Jesus. I'm holding nothing back. I'm singing this joyful noise. I'm telling every one of you, great love, oh Jesus. I'm holding nothing back. At the top of my lungs, I'm going to sing.
shall speak your truth with my days I will praise you my heart is yours 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 let this heart beat all for you every breath breathe to speak your truth with my days I will praise you my heart friends. Welcome to On Campus Kids. I'm Miss JJ, your Bible teacher, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. The Bible is God's Word. God helps men write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We've been reading in the Bible about the kings of the nation of Israel. Saul was the first king, but he disobeyed God. God took the kingdom from Saul and gave it to David. God gave David some incredible promises, even though God knew David was going to sin. David repented of his sin and was a good king. His son Solomon became king. God gave Solomon incredible wisdom, but did Solomon use his wisdom to live for God? Solomon built the temple as a house for God, but what else did Solomon do? We will have to read more to find out. Before we read, we're going to play What You Gonna Do? To play What You Gonna Do? I'll say a situation and you say how you would do it. What supplies would you need? What would you do? What you gonna do? If you need to bake some cookies without a recipe, do you know how to bake cookies? Do you know what ingredients you need and how much of them you would need? Do you know how to bake cookies? What are you going to do if you need to build a bookcase without instructions? What materials would you need? What steps would you take? How would you build it? What are you going to do if you need to make some clothes to wear without a pattern? How would you make yourself a shirt? or some shorts? What materials would you need? How would you do it? What you gonna do if you need to design a computer program? Do you know how to do that? Do you know what materials you would need or what to do? What you gonna do if you need to rule a kingdom? Do you know how to do that? Great job playing, what you gonna do? In order to do things well, we have to learn how to do them. We aren't born knowing how to bake cookies, build bookcases, or make clothes. We have to learn how to make things, how to work computers, and how to be leaders. Recipes, instructions, patterns, and classes can help us know what to do. And if we want to know how to live God's way, we have to know God's instructions. Let's see what instructions God gave for Israel's kings. Way before the Israelites asked for a king, God knew they were going to want one. Listen to God's instructions recorded in Deuteronomy 17. The king must not get large numbers of horses for himself. The king must not have many wives. If he does, they will lead him astray. He must not store up large amounts of silver and gold. When he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he must make for himself a copy of the law. He must write on a scroll the law that I am teaching you. He must copy it from the scroll of a priest who is a Levite. The king must keep the scroll close to him at all times. He must read it all the days of his life. Then he can learn to have respect for the Lord his God. He can carefully obey all the words of this law and these rules. He won't think of himself as being better than his people are. He won't turn away from the law. He won't turn to the right or the left. Then he and his sons after him will rule over his kingdom in Israel for a long time. God gave instructions for the king so they would know how to be great rulers. They would rule for a long time if they obeyed God's instructions. God knew the recipe for success and gave it to the Israelites. Number one, not a lot of horses. Number two, not a lot of wives. Number three, not a lot of silver and gold. Number four, make a copy of God's law and read it all the days of his life. Let's read and find out if Solomon obeyed God's instructions for how to be a great king. I'm going to read from the book of 1 Kings. 1 and 2 Kings come after 1 and 2 Samuel in the Old Testament. 1 Kings is a book of history. It records true things that really happened with real people. While I read from 1 Kings chapters 10 through 12, listen for the special instructions God gave to the kings. If you hear Solomon obeying one of God's instructions, give a thumbs up. If you hear Solomon disobeying one of God's instructions, give a thumbs down. 
Each year, Solomon received 25 tons of gold. Solomon had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He had 700 wives who came to him from royal families, and he had 300 concubines. His wives led him astray. As Solomon grew older, his wives turned his heart toward other gods. He didn't follow the Lord his God with all his heart, so he wasn't like his father David. Solomon worshipped Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth was the female god of the Sidonians. He also worshipped Moloch. Moloch was the god of the Ammonites. The Lord hated that God. Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He didn't completely obey the Lord. He didn't do what his father David had done. The Lord became angry with Solomon. That's because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel. He had appeared to Solomon twice. He had commanded Solomon not to worship other gods, but Solomon didn't obey the Lord. How many thumbs up and thumbs down did you give Solomon? Let's compare God's instructions to Solomon's actions. God said, the king must not get large numbers of horses for himself. Solomon had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. Thumbs down on that one. God said, the king must not have many wives. If he does, they will lead him astray. He had 700 wives who came from royal families and he had 300 concubines. His wives led him astray. Thumbs down on that one too. Solomon's wives led him into worshiping false gods. Solomon's heart was not devoted to God. God said, he must not store up large amounts of silver and gold. Each year, Solomon received 25 tons of gold. That's about the weight of four African elephants. That's a lot of gold, and he got that each year. Thumbs down on that one too. God said, when he sits on the throne of his kingdom, he must make for himself a copy of the law. He must read it all the days of his life. We didn't read about Solomon doing this, did we? God said reading the law every day would teach Solomon respect for the Lord. Solomon would carefully obey all the law. Then he and his sons after him would rule over the kingdom in Israel for a long time. Well, Solomon was not careful to obey the law. We saw that from the other instructions God gave for kings. And he and his sons didn't rule the kingdom of Israel for a long time. Listen to what happened. So the Lord said to Solomon, you have chosen not to keep my covenant. You have decided not to obey my rules. I commanded you to do what I told you, but you did not do it. So you can be absolutely sure I will tear the kingdom away from you. I will give it to one of your officials, but I will not do that while you are still living. Because of your father, David, I will wait. I will tear the kingdom out of your son's hand, but I will not tear the whole kingdom away from him. I will give him one of the tribes because of my servant, David. I will also do it because of Jerusalem. That is the city I have chosen. That is exactly what happened. Solomon ruled in Jerusalem over the whole nation of Israel for 40 years. Then he joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in the city of his father, David. Solomon's son, Rehoboam, became the next king after him. Rehoboam made a poor ruling as king and the Israelites rebelled against him. Even though it was Rehoboam's poor choice, it was all part of God's plan. The nation of Israel split in two. Rehoboam stayed king of Judah. A man named Jeroboam became the king of the northern tribes of Israel. So as we continue reading in the Bible, it is important to remember that Israel was split into two kingdoms. Judah was in the south and Israel was in the north. Solomon had incredible wisdom, but he didn't apply it in his life. He disobeyed God in many ways. Solomon's many wives led him to worship false gods. Because of Solomon's disobedience, the nation of Israel divided. Sin always has consequences, and Solomon's very serious sin had very serious consequences. King Solomon's sin led to the division of the kingdom. God's people needed a better king. Through David's family, God would send his own son, Jesus, to be a perfect king over God's people forever. And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder, the time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on blue. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, why did God say Solomon didn't obey like his father David obeyed? David disobeyed too. It can be surprising to read that David is recorded as a man who followed God. 
what? Both Solomon and David did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Sweet friend, the Lord is so incredibly gracious and forgiving. David is recorded as a man who followed God, even though he had sinned. Even though David sinned, he loved God with all his heart. He wanted to follow God. There was a time in his life when David chose to sin, but he repented. He turned from his sin, asked for God's forgiveness, and moved forward in his life following God. David loved God with all his heart. Solomon did not love God with all his heart. Solomon worshiped false gods. Solomon chose to sin, but he did not repent. He did not turn from his sin, ask for forgiveness, and move forward in his life following God. He was different from his father, David. We are all sinners. Everyone thinks, says, and does things that go against God. We all do things that are evil in the sight of the Lord. But do you love God with all your heart? When you sin, do you turn from it, ask for forgiveness, and move forward in your life following God? May God give us hearts like his, and may God help us love him with all our hearts. When we sin, may we be quick to turn away from our sin and turn to the Lord. The Lord is gracious and forgiving. The Lord is so good. Solomon lived years of his life in sin without repenting. He chose to disobey God and did not love God with all his heart. Because of Solomon's sin, the northern part of Israel was given to someone else, and Solomon's son was only king of the southern part of Israel. Still, none of this was beyond God's control. God was using all these choices and all these circumstances to work out his plan. God is faithful, even when his people are not. Let's pray. Holy Father, please help us to love you with all our hearts. Please keep us from sin and its consequences. If we do sin, please help us to confess it and turn from it. Please help us to go to you for the forgiveness and grace we need to follow you. You are so gracious and forgiving. You are so good. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's word with you today. There's so much more for us to learn together. Be sure to join me next time on iCampus Kids. Today we learned that even Jeroboam disobeyed God. Dude, well, I'm lifeguard Larry, and I'm never very scary. Got a sister named Mary, and my driving may vary. But bro, it's the only way to go. So when I don't want to be rude, and I really like something, I say, dude. Dudes, it's time to play the points game and see if you can beat Lifeguard Larry, okay? Now, you get a point if you have a shirt on today. All right, dude, that's a point. You get a point if your parents are in the room with you. Your mom, dad? Nope, no points for me. All right, you get an extra point right now if you go and hug somebody. Go hug somebody, go hug them right now. Go hug them right now. All right, yeah, I don't have anybody to hug. Okay, points recap. Point if you have a shirt on, yeah, dude. Point if your parents are in the room. Okay, did you get a point? And point if you went and hugged somebody. All right, how many points do you have? Dude, that's good, okay? I've got one. All right, next, give yourself a point if your name ends in a vowel. A-E-I-O-U. And remember, I'll give you a Y. Dude, Larry ends with a Y. I get a point, woohoo! All right, time for the last point. Give yourself a point if you have a brother or a sister. Whoa, cool. All right, time for our point recap. Points if you got a shirt on. All right, dude. Points if your parents are in the room watching. All right, cool. All right, you get a point if you hug somebody. All right, point if your name ends in a vowel, A-E-I-O-U-N-Y, Larry. Oh. And point if you have a brother or a sister. How many points did you get today? Dude, oh, that's a whole lot more than I got. All right, well, I'm lifeguard Larry, and I'm never very scary. I got a sister named Mary, and my driving may vary, but bro, it's the only way to go. So I'll never be rude, and when I really like something, say it with me, I say, dude. All right, dudes, I'll see you around for more iCampus Kids, dude. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you had a great time this week and we are so glad to be with you again. 
We have been learning about King Solomon the past few weeks. He was wise and kind, a great leader to the Israelites. He trusted God and even built a temple to worship him. But today we learned that Solomon sinned, and that sin had some pretty big consequences. You're right. You know, sin always has consequences. And Solomon's sin resulted in the entire kingdom of Israel being divided. So to help us remember the Northern Kingdom of Israel and the Southern Kingdom of Judah, we're gonna play a game together. So on our board, we've written the 12 tribes of Israel, plus a few extra names too. And our job is to work together and circle all 12 tribes. And for an extra challenge, let's see if we can figure out the two tribes who belong to Judah. Ooh, All right. Ready? Here we go. All right, do you wanna do the first one? All right, ready, set, go. All right, how about we find Simeon? Okay, all right, did we find Simeon on our Simeon. board? Ah, there it is. You got it. Great job. You got it. Okay, so our next one, let's find Levi. Okay, where's Levi? Levi, oh, I see it. There we go. Good job. Okay. All right, how about we try to find Judah? Ooh. Judah. Okay, so I think that might be one of the Southern Kingdom ones. Yeah, All I think right? you're right. All right. I think you're right. Did y'all find it? Great job. Okay. Now, next we're going to find Issachar. Did you find it? There it is. Good. Good okay. job. All right. How about Zebulun? Mm. Can you find that one? Zebulun. Great job. Oh, good. You're okay. Right. And next we're going to find Benjamin. And now. So, yeah, That's, go for it. Is that a Southern Kingdom that one as is well? That is a Southern I think so. Kingdom tribe. You're exactly yes, right. Yes, Benjamin. All right, next. Dan. Ooh, we can find Dan on our board. There it is. Got it? Okay, now next let's find Naphtali. Okay. There it is. Great job. Good job. Okay, how about Gath? <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's just a silly name. <laughs> it's a different name. It's yeah. easy to spell. It is. Find Gad. There we go. All right. All right. Next, we're going to find Asher. Great Asher. job. Good. good, good. Okay. All right. How about Ephraim? Can we find Ephraim? Great job. Yeah. All right. And last one, Manasseh. All right. How did we do? I think we found all 12. We did. Great job. We did. That is so good. You know, the southern kingdom consisted of Judah mm -hmm. and Benjamin, and we found those. We which did. Was good. That was great. Because of Solomon's sin, instead of ruling over the entire nation of Israel, now he only ruled over those two tribes of Judah and Benjamin. But God still showed mercy to Solomon, though. He allowed Solomon to rule as king for the rest of his life, and this served as a great foreshadow to when God would send his own son Jesus to be the perfect king forever and bring his people back together again. Boys and girls, our sin has consequences. But God is still faithful and he's merciful and he forgives us when we disobey. Thank you for helping us find the 12 tribes of Israel today. Challenge your parents to see if they can do it too. Let's close with one more song of worship today. See you next week on iCampus Kids. Today we've been learning about someone who is disobedient, but I want to be someone who is always listening for God to speak to me. I want to be obedient to what it is that he is asking me to do. And this song that we're going to sing right now, it is a song about us being obedient to God, hearing his voice and doing what he's telling us to do. This is Ready, Set, Go. Let's sing it together. God speaks all the time. We can hear him if we try. Are you listening? Oh, are you listening? God leads every day. He doesn't stop or change. Will you follow? Oh, will you follow? Because there's a start and finish line. I'm going to run my race to win. I'm marching and moving. Step by step, I'm running, my race is not finished yet. When God speaks, I want to listen, walk in obedience. Come on, ready, set, go, ready, set, go, ready, set, go. 
Time we can hear him if we try. Are you listening? Oh, are you listening? God leads every day, He doesn't stop a change. We follow, yes, we follow. There's a start and finish line. I'm gonna run my race to where I'm marching and moving. Step back. She's not finished yet When God speaks, I want to listen Walk in obedience And ready, set, go Ready, set, go Ready, set, go Come on, make it loud Ready, set, go I want to obey like Noah And the ark he built Like Queen Esther for such a time as this, I wanna be like the 12 disciples who followed him. Say it out. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. I wanna be brave like David when you like you fail. Like when Hannah gave her son Samuel. I wanna be like Peter. I rock what God can build. And ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. I want to have faith like Abraham and Sarah believed like the widow gave Elijah food to eat. I want to sing praise like Paul and Silas in the jail. Come on. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. I'm marching and moving step by step. I'm running. My race is not finished yet. When God speaks, I want to listen, walk in obedience, and ready, set, go, ready, set, go, ready, set. 